6.3 logarithmic functions. Yes, we're going to cover logarithms just like you did back in college algebra and pre-calculus. The reason we're doing so is because you need to be very familiar with all of the rules that you learned about logarithms back in those courses. So think of this as a refresher. If you'd like, you can feel free to skip the video and just look through the notes since it's something that if you're super comfortable with, you won't need to, that refresher. But if you forgot a lot of those little things, this is the video for you. All right, for this section, there is no homework. So I took these notes from my uh, pre-calculus course because I like how it defines things a bit better than our textbook. A definition of a logarithmic function a logarithm base b of a positive number x satisfies the following definition. For x greater than 0 and for b greater than 0 where b is not equal to 1, y is equal to the logarithm base b of x equivalent to b to the y power equals x. And you see this here. This is very helpful. Remember, you can always go from logarithmic form to exponential form. It just depends what you're working with and how you want to approach the problem. Some other important things to note is that the domain of a logarithm with base b is from 0 to infinity, and the range of the logarithmic function is from negative infinity to infinity. and you cannot take the log of a negative number. All right, the definition of a common logarithm. Now when we write log, if a base is not written, a certain number is implied. So reading from our notes, sometimes we see logarithms written without a base. In this case, we assume that the base is 10. In other words, the expression log of x means log base 10 of x. This is called the common log. Natural logarithms. The most frequently used base for a logarithm is e. Base e logarithms are called the natural logarithm. The base e logarithm, log base e of x, has its own notation ln of x. Most values of ln of x can be found only using a calculator. Take a moment to expect your calculator and find the natural logarithm command. And depending on your calculator, I'm sure by now you're super comfortable with your calculator, but usually if you have like an E of the x button, the ln is a shift and it's written like slightly above or vice versa. Let's read that box. Definition of a natural logarithm. A natural logarithm is a logarithm with base b. We write log base e of x simply as ln of x. The natural logarithm of a positive number x satisfies the following definition. For x greater than 0, y equals ln of x is equivalent to e raised to the y power equals x. We read ln of x as logarithm with base e of x. Or the natural logarithm. The logarithm y is the exponent to which e must be raised to get x. Since the functions y equals e and y equals ln of x are inverse functions, ln of e to the x power equals x. Since they're inverses, they kind of undo each other. All right, now let's talk about the graphs. I should have written that, written that there the graphs of our logarithmic functions. To begin, recall that g of x equals log 2 of x is the inverse function for f of x equals 2 to the x power. As inverses, the graphs of f of x equals 2 to the x and g of x equals log base 2 of x will be a reflection, over, a reflection across the line y equals x. They will have opposite characteristics described in the chart below. So for exponential and logarithmic functions, they both have asymptotes. Exponential functions go like this, right? 
So exponential functions have a horizontal asymptote versus logarithmic functions go like this. So they have a vertical asymptote. When graphing, you really need two points. You know it's going to be an L-shaped figure. You just need to take in consideration the shifts or some type of reflection over an axis. So knowing, working with a point where it's raised to a zero power or to a one power is something good to work with. Your domain swap. Your domain for an exponential function is now the range of your logarithmic function and vice versa. The range of your exponential function is your domain for your logarithmic function. The graph of g of x equals log base 2 of x will be as follows. A curve with no changes in direction that goes downward as it approaches the vertical asymptote at the y-axis and gently increases as it goes to the right. So here you have log base 2 of x. That's our function there. Every logarithmic graph will have will be a simple curve with no change in direction that will approach a vertical asymptote from one direction and gently increase or decrease in the other direction. So with this, knowing our calculus, we can apply some limits. So this box says the limit as x approaches infinity, so as our x gets bigger and bigger, what's happening? It's going to keep getting bigger very so slightly, but it's going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, 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 bigger. So it's also going to infinity. That's that first statement. And as x approaches 0 from the right, so as we're coming in from the right, as we're coming in for a graph to the right, we see that it's going down towards negative infinity. And that's that second statement here. So we have some arguments about our function and their endpoints. And of course, don't forget your laws of logs. Our laws of logs say that if you have the same log base, they're being multiplied. I can expand it so now they're adding with the same log base. If they're dividing, I can subtract the top minus the bottom with the same log base, and I can move an exponent to be a leading coefficient. Very helpful in the next section. So if you forget, I just have a simple post-it with these laws written down. You will see very soon how helpful they are. And some helpful properties. Remember, if you have this log base and it's the same base of your exponent, they're inverses, right? So they undo each other in a sense. So that you, your result is your exponent only and vice versa. If I have a log base with a log function with the same base, they're inverses, so they undo each other. Same for ln. These properties are something we used in our previous courses, and we can also manipulate it to our benefit in this course as well. Change of base formula. Sometimes we're given a base other than 10 and ln or ln. If we wish to evaluate, we can do so by taking the log or ln of our argument divided by the log or ln of our base. All right. We're pretty much done with the section. Just a couple of examples so that we remember how to use our, our logarithmic and um, LN rules. So first example says to evaluate. You want to find what this is equal to. The way I like to do it is think log base 3 of 81 and set it equal to an answer. From there, change it to exponential form. So that we have 3 to the x power equals 81. And what should x be? We see that x should be 4. And that's our answer. Our answer is 4. 
same thing for b. We want to set it equal to x, so we have log base 10 of 0 0.001 equals x. We write it in an exponential form. 10 to the x power is equal to 0 0.001. So in a sense, we have a fraction to the thousandths place. So our x would be negative 3. And in case you're thrown off by this, I'll give you a quick little reasoning. Since 10 to negative third power is 1 over 10 to the third power, which is 1 over 1,000. And in decimal form, that's 0 0.001, or 1 thousandth. And next example, our next set of examples, we're just studying our properties of logarithms, just so that you remember how they work. Now here we see that they have the same log base and they're being added. So because they're being added, we can go ahead and take their arguments and multiply them. So I have log base 4 of 2 times 32. So that we have log base 4 of 2 times 32. We get 64. And we can actually evaluate, right? Like our question's asking us to evaluate. So 4 to what power gives us 64? We get 4, we get x is equal to 3. Now for our next one, we see that we're subtracting. And so because they have the same log base, I can go ahead and write it as a division problem. Top minus, top divided by bottom. So I have 80 divided by 5, which gives me log base 2 of 80 divided by 5. That gives us 16. Now we can evaluate 2 to what power gives us 16. We get x is 4. All right, next set of examples. Your third example. Find x in ln of x equals 5. So there's many ways to approach this problem. The one that comes more naturally to me is if we have an equation we can do the same thing to both sides. So to undo the ln, let's take the e of both sides. So that we have e raised to the ln of x is equal to e to the fifth power. That ln and e are inverses, so that we're left with x is equal to e to the fifth power. Same thing for the next one. We have e. I know ln and e are inverses. So let's take the ln of both sides. So that I have the ln of e raised to the 5 minus 3x power is equal to the ln of 10. Now, why do we do this? We do this so that we can use that property and bring our exponent forward. And so the ln of e is equal to ln of 10. We know the ln of e, they undo each other. So we're just left with 5 minus 3x equals ln of 10. Now it's just a simple algebra problem with an ln. So we subtract 5 to both sides, minus 5. Negative 3x is equal to ln of 10. ln of 10 minus 5 divided by negative 3 divided by negative 3. x is equal to ln of 10 minus 5 over negative 3. And you can actually punch that into your calculator and get x is about, if you round, 0.89. I think it's a repeating 9, so technically it would be 0.9. All right, again, this should have all been reviewed, and we're going to use a lot of um, these properties that we've learned in the past in the next section. All right, that was 6.3 logarithmic functions. Thank you.